Okay, so today I'll try to speak about something strange in JavaScript. So the title is this, but uh, I want to change it to I can uh, prevent my colleague uh, hack my code at the end, probably. And now we see why. So first of all, I want to be honest with you. First, uh, I move uh, around uh, the stage uh, all the time, so you have to move the hand left and right, but uh, the second problem is uh, today I'll talk about something that you never use in your uh, code, in your daily, basically. But uh, the framework that uh, you use uh, basically w uh, work with uh, this kind of stuff uh, under the hood for you. So if you are not interested, you can sleep. It's after lunch, so you can do this. But if you are interested, you can keep uh, the track. So first, first of all, if you don't know me, I'm Luca Del Pupo, a senior software developer in Nearform, and uh, I love JavaScript and TypeScript. If you love it, you can drop me a message and we can chat with it. I also try to run a YouTube channel, and uh, I write some blog posts. I love running, hacking, and uh, pets. But uh, let's move to the topic. So I want to start from this uh, example. So how many of you has uh, built uh, a UI component uh, for uh, your company or use uh, a component from another library? OK, perfect. In this code, uh, if you are building a button, for instance, in this code, there is a problem with the status of the clicked uh, property. Do you know what uh, uh, JavaScript uh, does for us uh, in the property clicked, for instance, uh, to decide uh, what you can do with this property. Someone know the property descriptor, for instance? Okay, Mattel, okay, Mattel, you, you, you can answer. But uh, under the hood, uh, the, proper, the JavaScript for you create uh, an object to describe uh, your property. So when you call uh, the clicked and you assign a property, under the hood, JavaScript creates an object with three properties. The first one is writable. This means that uh, if you set writable to true, you can change the value after the, the first assign, else it's a read-only property. Then there is another flag called enumerable. The enumerable is the way to retrieve the property from a foreign loop or you, when you use the object.keys. Okay. If you set it, this to true, you can see the property in the, in the result of the or in the object keys, or if you set this to false, basically the property is hide from the outside. And the last one is the configure. If you set true, what happens is that the property is, uh, un uh, un can unchange the configuration. Post configuration, if you set this to, uh, sorry, to uh, false, if you set this to true, you can change the configuration after uh, the, the first in initialization. But uh, this is what happened. So JavaScript create a method called property descriptor every time you create in your uh, object. So you can uh, using a method if you want. The method is uh, Object dot define property. You can create your object. Yes, it's not the best uh, code you can write, but you can use the person. You can create an object person and set the property name and decide that the value is Alice in this case. And you can decide writable, enumerable, and configurable. In this way, you can prevent maybe to expose the property to the outside or you can prevent that someone des decide to change the descriptor of uh, your property. The syntax is pretty simple, OK? Imagine you have to create uh, an object with many, many uh, properties. You can use uh, the defined properties. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You have the object. You have to pass another object with the, the key and uh, the descriptor of each property. In this way, you can decide to change the behavior of your JavaScript uh, of the uh, of the of JavaScript and decide the the specify of each uh, property. In this way, you can prevent, for instance, to expose a property to your maybe create a side effect in your library. 
Okay, you can also retrieve uh, this vector. Uh, so if you want to maybe understand if you can do something, you can use the object uh, get own property descriptor. You have to pass the object and then maybe ask uh, for the in this case the name uh, the age and you can retrieve uh, all the configuration of the property. And in this way you can decide if you want if you can change the value, if you can enumerate it and so on and so on. In this case uh, I have the common usage of uh, object property descriptor basically no one obviously uh, but if you need to um, if you need to be uh, more specified in the behavior of your property you can use it what happened in reality is that every time you create an object under the hood you create this property and by default JavaScript set that, uh, set the value to true and everyone can change your status uh, in the future and what happened that uh, someone opened an issue on GitHub and say, but why uh, use the click at the button, uh, the click now it's different from your documentation. Yes, but you are using my state and this is what happened basically. So what are the characteristics that you can decide how uh, structure the object that you want to expose, okay? So you can, for instance, uh, decide uh, which uh, attribute must be exposed to the, to the outside, uh, which can be changed by the outside, or maybe uh, if, you want if you want to hide the, um, the property, you can, uh, put the, you can set the enumeration to false, basically. So we can refactor the previous code in this way to try to keep our object safer. How? In this case, we can create the, the bottom, for instance, and using the object defined property, we can decide that the clicked bottom as a value false, okay, is uh, writable, so you can change the, the value, but for instance, is not enumerable and is not configurable. So what happened in this case, uh, the the people that, uh, the, the user that know the, the name of the property can change the value of your property, but basi basically they cannot change the configuration of uh, your, uh, your property in this case. And uh, the result is that uh, basically in this case uh, you have uh, a safer uh, implementation of your button, but if someone detect that uh, the clicked button, the clicked property exists in your button can change the status of uh, your object. So how can we uh, try to prevent uh, this problem? Because I want to create my UI kit or my library, but I don't want to expose uh, my internal to the, to, to the user. Yes, sorry, okay. If you don't know, exists a symbol. How many of you already know symbols? Not all. Matteo, you are not in, in the list. Okay, if you don't know symbol, symbol are uh, a primitive type in JavaScript. Uh, it, uh, it's introduced in XMAX 6, if I don't remember bad. If you call uh, the symbol function, you receive uh, a unique uh, value. So, as you can see in this example, there, is, uh, the same, there, are, there, there are two symbols uh, with the same key, as you can see, but in reality, you have two different uh, instances of uh, two different uh, memory in, uh, in, the, in the memory. So if you try to compare the prop symbol with the other prop symbol, the result is false. This means that we can use this as property of our uh, object, and only the, the, the user that have the instance of the symbol can change the value of your property. So it's important that uh, the symbol is not a class, so you can call new symbol with the name, okay? This is not possible. Which, are, uh, which is the common usage, basically, you can use, uh, basically, symbols are used as a property name of uh, your uh, object. You can use uh, them also for other kind of stuff, but basically, the common usage is this. And uh, in this way, you can prevent the collision. So if you have uh, in, in your object a name, but you want the name is just uh, the property from, uh, that uh, the user use from outside. You can use another symbol with the name, uh, na name string, and in this way you can prevent uh, the collision of the property. 
The result is something like this, okay? We can create our symbol for the name and for the surname, and in, at the end, we can create an object with the name and as real property, and then use the symbol to create our custom, uh, um, our uh, um, hidden property. And uh, yes, the person continue to have our property, but only if you have uh, the instance of uh, your symbol, the reference of your symbol, you can access to it, okay? Characteristics, they are unique. So if you call a symbol the name of the symbol, the, um, the value that you receive from JavaScript is uh, unique. So and uh, if you try to compare two symbols in the same application, what happens is that you receive false. They live for entire life of your application. Okay, so when you when you ask for the for the symbol, you receive a, a reference, and until the end of uh, the application, you have this reference. They are not enumerable, so if you try to call foreign or object keys, uh, what happens is that uh, you, don't, you don't receive them, basically. But uh, you can use the object get on property, this, uh, get on property symbol to retrieve all the symbol inside of an object. As you can see, using this uh, method, uh, you can try to hack uh, another object because you can get the reference of the symbol you have to be a bit crazy to do this, but you can maybe change uh, the behavior of, a, of an object. But uh, there are some cases in in, uh, when we want to uh, share symbols uh, around the application, okay? How we can do this? this. Basically, using symbol.4, you can create a symbol and using the global symbol registry to say to the global, global symbol registry that you want to share this symbol in the future. Who know the string in the, uh, in the for method can ask in another file for the same symbol. As you can see, uh, here is a my module. Okay, here is the, wait, the my module in a, in a file and another my module two in another file that ask for the same symbol. If you are in the index.js and you, can, you try to import uh, the true symbol and compare them, the result is true. So what happened in this case is the same instance of the symbol. This can be useful if you want to share the symbol all around the application. But please take care of your string because uh, if you share with the wrong uh, colleague, uh, he can change uh, your life or your job. There are also uh, some well-known symbols. Uh, how many of you use a for of uh, loop? Okay, under the hood, uh, to use the for of loop, there is a well-known symbol called uh, symbol.iterator. Okay, under the hood, the JavaScript already built in the, uh, the iterator pattern for the array, for instance, but you can create uh, your own class uh, with uh, this uh, pattern. For instance, as you can see here, you can create a range function that accepts a start and end, okay? And you can create the iterator function using, in this case, a generator function that try to iterate over the, the element until the current element is less than the last element and return the, the element. At the end, you can call the for let number of new, new range and uh, iterate over the, the class using this, uh, this simple uh, uh, pattern. So at the end, what happens is that we can refactor our button in this way. So we can create our, uh, our symbol. In this case, the name is the clicked. We can create our button, OK? And using the square bucket, we can set the status to true. And then when someone clicks the button, we can set the status to uh, sorry, to false, and then set the status to false, uh, to true. Um, it's important to not share that symbol, because if you share the, the, the symbol, what happens is someone ch can change uh, your, your behavior at the end. But uh, there is a problem. As you can see before, if uh, someone is crazy, can use the get own symbol, get a symbol, and uh, try to hack your object. How we can uh, prevent this? So to do this, uh, yes, 
I forgot this animation. We can use the week map or the week collection in general. E, how many of you know the, gar the garbage collector? Mattel. <laughs> okay, why are you using JavaScript if you don't know garbage collector? <laughs> okay, if you don't know uh, what is uh, the garbage collector, is uh, a sort of uh, tool in the JavaScript uh, language that uh, try to clean uh, your memory when uh, an object uh, is never used, is, uh, is, uh, is not used. Okay, the weak uh, collection in general work uh, very well with uh, the garbage collector. You don't uh, have to pay, uh, you don't have to pay attention to when to clean uh, the weak map, but, but the garbage collector when detect that the object is just is only inside of a weak collection, okay, clean the memory, clean the object, and clean the, the, the element inside of the weak collection. But how this weak collection works? Let's start from the weak map. The weak map is a simple map, okay, but the, the, the special characteristic is that the key must be an object, okay? So you must use a reference of an object as a key. In this case, you can create the weak map uh, using the new, okay? Then you can create your object, you can set the, uh, the element in the weak map using the object, and then you can put in the value whatever you want, string, object. You can describe another uh, shape of the, uh, of the object for your internal state, and so on and so on. Then using the get, you can retrieve the element from the weak map, you can delete it if you want, or you can also uh, check if the element uh, exists in the weak map. And uh, the common usage of the weak map is basically to encapsulate data or create a caching. But remember that this works very well with the garbage collector. So if you need it, and maybe you want to prevent uh, a memory leak, you can do this uh, with uh, a weak map, okay? So for instance, you don't, you don't, ha you don't have the control of the remove of an element from the, from the, um, the DOM. In this case, uh, you don't have to take care about that, uh, but the garbage collector remove the object for you when the only reference uh, uh, is uh, inside of a weak collection. So the characteristics is uh, pretty simple. So you can use a weak map just for uh, object uh, as key and uh, work very well with the garbage collector. There are also some limitations. So works just only with object. But if you want to work with a simple map, you can work with the map without any problem. In this case, you can use the, the string, the, the number for the keys without any problem. This is important uh, because sometimes the people uh, have uh, misunderstanding between these two, two collections. You cannot uh, iterate over the weak map, okay? You can use uh, for each, uh, for, uh, for a loop, uh, entries, and so on, and so on. You can just uh, use the set, the has, and the delete. And you cannot clear your uh, weak map, okay? If you want to delete just one element, you can do it, but uh, you cannot clear all the, all, the, all the collection. This is the job of the garbage collector. So, at the end, we can review our code in this way, we can create a weak map, and the weak map ma uh, must be uh, private, okay, inside of, uh, of your module. You can create the, the object, in this case, the button, and using the weak map, you can set the, an element with the reference of your button, and set the status, in this case, to false. And when someone clicks the button, you can set the status to true. The only way to try to hack this uh, implementation is to have uh, the reference of the weak map uh, uh, of the of the weak map. If you put the the object private inside of your module, you don't have to to take care about that. Okay, so the same animation. Okay, but uh, you can do this also with the weak set. Basically, the weak set is a set, but with all the characteristics of the weak map already seen before. At the end, uh, it's pretty simple. So you can uh, create a new weak map using the new. You can create your object uh, and add the element inside of your weak set. Pretty simple. You can check if the object exists inside of the, the weak set or delete it if you want. At the end, uh, if you have 
so, uh, the, the object inside of the set, you can say, okay, I have this uh, object because maybe you want to detect if it uh, is um, clicked. If you have uh, the object in the, in the weak set, is clicked, else is not clicked, basically. Common usage is basically the same already seen with the weak, weak map. Basically, in this case, uh, you have uh, the limitation that you have just the reference of the object. So you, have, you can handle just one state uh, of uh, your, your, your uh, object or your component or whatever you are building. And uh, uh, they work very well with the DOM and uh, basically to create private data storage. The same characteristic already seen before is uh, true also for weak set. So you can work just with an uh, object. If you need to work with a string, a number, there is the set. You don't have to take care about that. Work with, uh, uh, very well with the, um, with the garbage collector. And the limitations are the same. So unfortunately, they work just with uh, the reference of the object. You cannot iterate over the, uh, the weak set, so you can use the for each, the entries, and so on, and so on, and you cannot clear. At the end, the previous example can rewrite in this way. So you can create a weak set, you can create your button, and only if someone click the button, you can add the element to the weak set. At the end, what you can do is just to check if the button is, uh, is uh, inside of the weak set, if it's inside, it's a click it, else it's not. Okay. Okay. Uh, now it's time to move to something cool, I suppose. How many of you already know proxy? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Proxy is a, a JavaScript API. Uh, I don't remember it. Uh, I suppose uh, it has introduced in the ECMAScript six or seven. I don't remember. But uh, what you can do with the, the proxies is just to wrap uh, your object and decide what uh, the other can do with your original object, okay? So the, the key concept of the proxy is uh, something called uh, trap, okay? You can decide how to trap uh, your object. In this case, uh, I can detect to you, uh, I decide to use the get, okay? So if someone tried to get a property from my, uh, from my object, I want to do something. Okay, the target in this example is uh, the, real, the original object, okay? The handler is an object that describes the trap of my proxy. Then I also explain the, the, get, uh, the get trap. What you have to do is just to create a proxy using the new proxy API. The first element is the original, object and the second element is uh, your handler and uh, at the end uh, you have to expose uh, uh, the, the proxy element not the original element because the proxy element uh, has uh, all the decoration you already had uh, using the handler uh, using the proxy in this case uh, the handler try to understand if you try to ask for the uh, birth here okay what happened is that uh, if the, prop the, the property name is birth here try to uh, calculate the birth year using the age. In this case, get the current, uh, the current date, the full year of the current date, and remove uh, the age. And you have the result, in this case, uh, 1992, but I suppose it's wrong because I wrote this uh, slide last year. So I'm, I'm pretty old. But you can do the same also with the set. For instance, you want to uh, prevent that someone uh, set the value with the wrong data. For instance, in this case, uh, I try to understand if someone try to uh, set the age, okay, and if the type is not a number or the value is not between 0 and uh, 150, I raise an error, okay, in this case, uh, the type error, as I set the, the property without any problem. At the end, the result is, uh, is this. If you try to set the age to 30, the result is Okay, but if you try to set 30 as a string, the result is an exception, an exception and kaboom at the end. You can uh, work with different trap. You can use has, uh, the has, the apply, the construction, the delete property, and whatever you want. There is the link to hold the, the trap if you want. And uh, at the end, 
the, the, the common usage of, uh, the, um, of the proxy is, out, is to, to validate the data. So if you want to validate uh, the data that uh, someone tried to assign to your object, uh, you can do this, or you can create constraint, constraint around the, the object. You, it's uh, also common to uh, use a proxy for logging. If you want to see how many times uh, you try to assign something in your, uh, in your application, you can put a console log in a set uh, and, uh, and log uh, the, 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 the object, the property, and so on and so on. And uh, if you work with uh, Vue, Vue uh, use a proxy to create the reactivity around uh, the framework at the end. So at the end, we can refactor our button in this way. So we can create an handle for the set. And uh, if uh, someone tried to set the clicket, OK, we raise an error, as uh, so we can uh, set the, the value without any problem. What we can do here is uh, this. We can create the button. We can um, use the add event listener and use the original button, we can set the clicket. The magic is in the last row, OK? So you can wrap your proxy and expose just the wrapped proxy. So inside of your module, you can set the clicket button. And you, if you want, you can also expose it. But uh, if someone that tried to use the wrapped button tried to set the clicket button, receive an error. And in this case, uh, your uh, implementation is safe uh, from the outside. And I, I have to remember this animation. At the end, uh, the last but not the least, there is uh, this uh, API that uh, can uh, uh, help uh, if you want to, uh, if you don't want to handle the try catch, basically. With the reflect, uh, with the reflect, uh, you can do different kind of stuff. You can set, uh, you can get uh, a property from uh, a, an object. So, if you try to get the property, you can retrieve it. You just to have to pass the the, um, the object and the property. You can uh, set the the, the value. The important part here is that if you try to set uh, a um, a property that is uh, read only. In this case, uh, you don't receive uh, an exception, but uh, the result is, uh, um, if is false, if you don't remember that. So you can handle this uh, situation using a simple if and as, OK? Without uh, try without up uh, with the try catch uh, and understand all this, mm, the, boiler, the boiler code around this uh, solution. You can, also define the, the, you can also define the property descriptor. As you can see, it's pretty similar, but uh, th the only difference is that you use the reflect.define property. But the cool stuff is uh, this one. You can retrieve uh, all the property using the own keys. The own keys uh, return the, pro the, the numerable property and also the symbol. So if you need to have all the property inside of an object, you can use the own keys from the reflect, and you don't have to call uh, two different methods, one to have the, number, the object of keys to have the list of the property, and then the object dot get own symbol, get property symbol, uh, if you want both. But uh, probably you are asking why I have to learn or understand the reflect API if uh, uh, I, I already have all this kind of stuff, basically. The result, the, the question is a good question, in my opinion. But uh, the real, uh, uh, the real uh, motivation is uh, if you need uh, to work with um, uh, meta, meta programming and you don't want to pay, take care of all the exception that can uh, that you can have uh, if you try to, for instance, uh, change the descriptor or something like this. Uh, using the reflect API, basically, you have a different sing uh, signature of the, of the method, and uh, the result is always a, a, a Boolean in case you try to change some stuff, uh, and uh, you just have to handle the, the true or the false, and the, 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 the flow of your code base is cleaner, basically. 
so you don't have to take care of all the error around of this uh, solution. At the end, uh, you can use a Reflect API with the proxy and they work together uh, very well and uh, nothing else. Uh, basically, I'm in the conclusion now. So, uh, first of all, how many of you already use one of these uh, uh, features? Not so much, okay. Probably you are working in a high standard quality company, right? I suppose. No. You have a bad uh, colleague? Yep. And basically you want to have a free uh, weekend, right? Okay. Basically, I, I'm honest. In reality, the, the people that use this feature create uh, stuff uh, for other developer, okay? And uh, as you know, uh, how many of you use any with TypeScript? Okay, to be honest, exactly. <laughs> Basically, if you want to uh, prevent the people that uh, use has any, you have to try to uh, create this kind of stuff around your object, basically. But the conclusion, so the first conclusion, this is the, uh, the JSD, so JavaScript is fantastic. Are you agree with me? Yeah. Okay, the second is uh, we have different uh, way to do the same stuff uh, with JavaScript. Uh, and basically, that is not the best way. That is the, the best way for your solution. How can you understand which is uh, your best solution, try it, uh, and if you fail, you have to decide to another solution. Basically, this is the result. Then, um, when, you create some, uh, when you create a library or a component that uh, is exposed to the outside, uh, take care of what you want to expose uh, to the outside. Because uh, what happens, uh, basically, we, when you have a uh, naughty colleague, uh, they try to hack your code uh, because they need uh, just a uh, a different status uh, for a different uh, um, feature that is uh, needed just for a client. Basically, this is the result. And if you don't want to uh, have a, a headache or a difficult weekend, uh, you have to pay attention of that before release the, the code. Then uh, JavaScript uh, has a different uh, feature and we have all the power to do whatever you want, uh, wherever we want uh, with the code base basically. But uh, as you can know, uh, if, you, if you have a great power, you have also great responsibility at the end. And uh, basically I know uh, I talk about something strange, uh, but uh, if you work with React, Angular, Vue, under the hood, they, work, uh, they use uh, this kind of feature for you, okay? And uh, in my opinion, uh, you have to handle your framework and not the framework handle you. So if you know this kind of stuff, that what, what the framework does for you, you can also prevent the problem in production at the end. And basically, that's it. If you want, this is the QR code for the slide. Uh, if you want, uh, there is also a repo where you can find uh, some example of how uh, this feature works. I also create a series uh, and a blog post series about uh, this topic. Uh, you can find them in my YouTube channel or in WTO. And uh, last but not least, I'm Luca. The, these are my contacts. If you want to chat with me, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, X or Twitter, I don't know. And LinkedIn are open. You can drop me a message. I respond uh, as soon as possible. I have a family. And uh, this is my YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe to it, uh, and this is my uh, WTO account. At the end, uh, I work with Nier in Nearform. If you want, we are hiring. And if you want to join us, you are welcome. And last but not least, thank you. I hope you are enjoying the conference. And that's all. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Luca. We have a, a time for a couple of questions. One is coming from home, so you can do a royal rumble to decide the next one. Uh, from Matteo Simeonato, it's cool, but looks extremely cumbersome to set up. It, uh, is it something that JS devs usually do? Is it mainly done by experienced JS devs, or is it extremely rare to find applied? 
can you give me the time uh, when uh, he wrote the... Because I suppose the time is near the, the, the first part. Okay. Uh, basically, I think uh, the, the first part where you have to handle, when you want to handle the object property descriptor, yes, it's a, a sort of boilerplate, basically. Uh, but uh, th there is no uh, way to reduce the boilerplate, basically. Uh, th you have to know the syntax uh, and handle it in this way. As I said before, it's not uh, something that you use uh, in your routine. So you have to do, maybe you can create your utility around uh, this, uh, this feature, but uh, it's, some, it's uh, something that uh, when you use uh, two or three times uh, per year because you are lucky, uh, it's uh, too much, I suppose. Thank you. What's your name? Hi, Hi I'm Matteo. Uh, I have a question about the proxy part. Basically, uh, looking at uh, your snippet, uh, seems that the proxy API were creating a rapid uh, button component, uh, correct? But yeah. this is not actually solving our problem in this way, because uh, if the user will read the, the button again from the DOM, we are still getting the original uh, yes, reference Yes, true. Of it. This is true. Yeah. But uh, uh, in this example, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, true in reality. But basically, I think uh, you don't, uh, in a way, if uh, someone wants to hack your code in JavaScript, yeah. can hack your code. Yeah. Don't worry. And uh, always. And uh, you can see uh, beautiful stuff uh, when people try to hack your code. But at the end, yes, it's true. In this, uh, in this example, if you try to get the element from the DOM, you can hack the clicket without any problem. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And uh, just as a provocation, probably. If I proxy the document object to good luck <laughs> to change the get element, uh, for example, uh, uh, you can do this if you want. But uh, I th I think then you have to talk with your colleague, with your manager. Yeah, it's a problem. Okay. And uh, yes. And thank you again, Luca. Mm-hmm. <laughs>